Welcome to Online Worship with Davidsonville United Methodist Church. My name is Jackie Weevil, and it is truly a pleasure to be worshiping online with you today. Whether you are joining us on YouTube or Facebook, we just ask that you let us know you're here. You can do that by either liking this video or commenting down below. We can't see your face, so that is really, when we are worshiping online, that is our only way of knowing that you are here. And we want to know that. We want to know who is engaging with us in our online platforms. We have started, in, in December, we started drive-in church services at 11 o'clock every Sunday, weather permitting. We come together in the church parking lot and from the safety of your own vehicle, you can listen to the music and the sermon that Pastor Wendy and Pastor Paul put together for us there in person. And if you aren't comfortable even going to drive-in worship yet, that's okay. We will continue our online worship services moving forward so that everybody can worship, whether that's from the safety and comfort of your own home, or from our parking lot, or from our building when it is safe enough to gather inside once more. But for now, we have online worship every Sunday at 9 a.m. on YouTube or Facebook. And of course, you can watch anytime after that. And then on Sunday morning, 11 a.m. for drive-in worship in the church parking lot. Pastor Wendy has started a brand new sermon series called Out of the Darkness. And we are on a journey together to discover how to have the light of Christ within us no matter our circumstances, no matter the darkness and trials and turbulation that may surround us, how we can be grounded in the light of Christ. So friends, let's find out what Pastor Wendy has to share with us today about the light of Christ and baptism. Let us worship together. Yeah. 
empty place If not for grace Listen to that again Where would I be? You only know I'm glad you see Through eyes of love A hopeless case An empty place If not for grace Amazing grace How sweet the sound I once was lost But now I'm found A hopeless case An empty place If not for grace A hopeless case I have seen of the Jordan River remind me of the creek that runs behind my cabin or the streams that run through the farms of Davidsonville. It's muddy water about waist high that's deep enough for full baptismal immersion but murky enough that you wonder if you're any cleaner when you get out than when you had gone in and yet the land of Israel is so dry and arid and rocky that the sight of flowing water giving life to the trees and the reeds and the frogs and the fish and the birds and the insects is striking. Now John didn't offer baptism to the people of the of Jordan area as a simple religious purity ritual. The synagogues and the temple had bathing pools for that. John, as a prophet, knew the needs of the people and knew the relationship and love that God was offering and he was issuing a wake up call. Come on people, wake up, rise up. Don't be pulled this way and that by the culture or by religious institutions. Remember our covenant with God. Focus on God, change your hearts and your lives. Confess, repent, be baptized, and as a sign of God's forgiveness and your transformation. But seeing that muddy water of Jordan and knowing what it feels like to wade in the murky waters in the creek by my cabin, it reminds me of the lengths that Jesus went to, to connect with our humanity. He didn't need to be baptized. He was already divine, holy, sinless. He, as John announced, Jesus was the powerful, predicted Messiah, the Son of God. Well, writer and theologian Frederick Buchner once observed that Jesus honored human life by living one, and he hallowed human death by dying one, and he created new life by being raised into one. He took his place among us so that we might have a place with him. Jesus entered the Jordan. And he held his breath, and the dark waters closed over him. And as he was raised by John's hand, as he came up back into the sunlight, he saw the heavens ripped open, and the Spirit descended on him like a dove. And he heard a voice from heaven say, 
you are my son with whom I am pleased. You are loved. Many people make pilgrimages to the site where John baptized, to the spots along the Jordan where they figure that Jesus was baptized. Now, baptism by John shows us what we can do for God. We need to be aware of what we do and why. Are we caught up in our consumer culture, just accumulating a lot of stuff that we hope will show what we're worth? Or do we check off, go to church on Sundays, and then pronounce that we are saved? Or are we truly aware of the harm and hurt that we may have caused and the relationships we are have broken? Do we ask for forgiveness? Do we repent? Do we spend time with God, reading scripture, listening, and looking for God's will to lead us? Do we have an intentional life of faith? The baptism of Jesus shows what God does to us. First, Jesus saw the heavens ripped open, and that shows us that creation was altered. Now, you might take it as a sign that humans have new access to God, but it is also definitely a sign that God is no longer confined to the places that we name as sacred, not in temples, nor in churches. That's where we humans tend to lock God up. God is on the loose. Second, Jesus heard a voice from heaven. You are my son. I love you. I am pleased with you. These are the words that every single child of God needs to hear. You are loved. I am pleased with you. Third, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. And then Jesus was immediately thrust out into the wilderness where he faced all the temptations of Satan for 40 days. You know, that dove, might, it might have looked like a dove coming down at first, but it had the power of an eagle with talons to pick him up and carry him off into the wilderness. And this just shows us that the Holy Spirit is powerful and that Jesus, the Son of God, is not just a nice guy. Right from the outset of his ministry, he confronted evil. Jesus' purpose was to redeem the world to God by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he did that by confronting the evil that had a grip on our world. Our baptism comes with the promise of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us to engage what is evil to transform not only us and our lives, but the whole world world. Once, a member of our congregation was in church with her whole family and the preacher was teaching about baptism. Suddenly, her son poked her. She bent down to hear what he had to say. And he said, Mom, was I baptized? Yes, she said. You were baptized before we moved to this house, before we became members of this church. Well, he whispered, did it work? In the United Methodist Church, we understand baptism as a means of grace that washes away the guilt of our sin and brings us into the Holy Church, the body of Christ, the family of God. Baptism brings us into union with God and in friendship with others, all Christians, in all times and all places. 
and baptism gives us new life. We are spiritually born anew with the promise of God's spirit working in and through us, and we are given the Holy Spirit to nourish our faith until our final deliverance when we will enter full salvation. And that moment when we die and we are fully and completely welcomed in to God's eternal life and love. Faith is a combination of God's gifts and our response to those gifts. Faith is an awareness of our dependence on God and our submission, our surrendering our wills to God's will. It is the Spirit working in us to empower our service that makes a difference in the world. Yes, it's about the divine working in us, but it's not just about our individual experiences. We are baptized into the family of God. So during baptism, the family, the church, also makes promises. They promise to share the good news and live according to the example of Jesus Christ and to surround the new members with a community of love and forgiveness so that they can grow in their faith. We promise to nurture one another. In our congregation, gifts of prayer shawl and wooden crosses are given to each new person who is baptized. These are made by hand and infused with prayer so that long after the moment of baptism has passed, that person might still feel a congregational hug if they wrap themselves in the prayer shawl, or they may touch the cross and remember God's Jesus' work for us and the care that will come through the congregation. These are tactile signs of God's grace that flows through our nurture. Nurture plays out in big and small ways, like committees that order the life and work of the church, and the singing and praying and witnessing of worship that makes the presence of God feel real to us and the work of ministry in our neighborhoods, the care for people's bodies and economic and spiritual and emotional care for all of our neighbors. Sunday school, youth group, Bible study, those small classes that make room for us to explore the scriptures so that together we can interpret them for life. And most importantly, in all of those moments that we're together, the Holy Spirit works through our relationships. These are examples of faithful living and support when we really need it, and conversations and corrections, all of that is wrapped up in the nurture of a congregation. And goodness gracious, there are mature, caring Christian disciples among us whose faith is so strong, you just want to stand near them, hoping that their strength washes over you and makes you strong. Their faith glows and lights the way for so many others, and we tend to take it all for granted until their time on earth is done. Just this week, we have been involved in planning the funerals for three of our members. And my heart feels like three lights have been snuffed out. The grief of these people's family is deep. And because these disciples lived and loved well, that darkness seems to be everywhere. It's extensive. It feels like it 
permeates not just our congregation, but the whole community. We who are left on this earth are sad. But these three beloved have reached their ultimate destinations. They have received their salvation. This world is not our final home. Jesus said, in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, and I'm going to go ahead and prepare one for you. And I will come back and take you to me so that where I am, you may be also. In baptism, we celebrate the past grace of God that brings us to that point. And we give thanks for the Holy Spirit that works in us right at that holy moment. And we look forward to a lifetime of further and deeper experiences of God and our commitments and our ministries until finally we reach the anticipated moment ourselves of death and resurrection into eternal glory. Friends, their light is not snuffed out. It is shining brightly in heaven, and it continues to radiate from all the people whose lives have been nurtured by them. I have heard your sorrow and pain, and I have also heard your stories of how they lit your faith, nurtured it, gave you help when you needed it. I've heard your stories of how God's grace has worked through them to power your life and your love and your hope. Epiphany, that's the weeks that follow Christmas, is a season when we look for the revelations of God in the life and teachings and death and resurrection of Jesus. In the dark winter months, in the darkness of our souls, we look for the divine light that carries us forward. Today, we learned about the light of God and grace that shines brightly in baptism. And we remembered those that nurtured that light in us. And now, as our time together draws to a close and you're about to go into the rest of the week, I encourage you to let the divine light in you brighten the world and show others to a life of love and hope and faith. Let your light shine. Let's pray together. Holy God, source of all that is good, we've gathered together seeking your grace and love. And we give you thanks for being present in our lives. We ask you to fill us with your light. Be generous with your love. Count us among your children. Be compassionate toward our mistakes. Forgive our failings. Be gracious with your power and strengthen us for your service. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
dark of night will not overtake me. I am pressing into you. experienced, it is often hard to hold on to the light. As we are surrounded by darkness, darkness driven by grief, loss of loved ones and church members, and the violence that we witnessed in the Capitol, it is hard to hold on to the light. But the light of Christ, the light of God, is not diminished by what we've experienced in the past several days. For it is in the darkness, in the despair, in the agony, in the pain that we face, that light shines. Often we need to just open our eyes or to focus on the light and the peace. But as Pastor Wendy talked about today and our baptism and Jesus' baptism and how we can be lights in the world, light in our community through baptism with Christ, we have the opportunity in the darkest of times to be witnesses of life and light to others. It is how we respond in the times of great darkness that we can be a light for others, a bearer of peace and hope and love in the darkest of times. So today I ask you to join me as we come together in prayer. Prayer is what unites us as a community. And as we have suffered great loss and witnessed great violence this week, we can come together as a church, as a community, and pray for light to come in to the world. 
Friends, would you join me in prayer? God, there is great suffering among us. There is grief and despair. But we come before you today to ask you to bring peace. Bring peace and light among us. God, we pray for the families of all who are missing and grieving the loss of a loved one. For the family of Joe Kidwell. For the family of Bev King. And for the Broad family. God, may you give them a peace in knowing that their loved ones are with you. God, we pray for those among us in our congregation who are ill, who are sick and experiencing the isolation and the loneliness of being separated from loved ones right now during the COVID pandemic. We pay, pray for a congregant whose cousin passed away this week. Be with their family during this challenging time. God, we thank you that you are the light that shines from within. Amidst everything we are going through, help us to recognize the several ways that light is shining within us. The light of faith, the light of hope, the light of love that we carry. Regardless of the darkness around us, whether or not the sun is shining or the rain or snow is falling, remind us that there is light and that you have given us this light, a light that will never go out. Help us to brighten the world of the depressed, to glow in a world of darkness and to shine when others are struggling to find joy. Remind us that we have light and that you have commanded us to be that light in the world. In a time of political unrest, may your light be a light of peace. In a time of hate, may your light be a light of love in a time of poverty, may your light be a light of prosperity. Help us to be the light in the world. Help us to share your light. It is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. 